Hi, I'm Andrew Harvey, technical writer here at Drahedral Engineering. Today, I'm going to show you the process for configuring your application so that it runs on both a primary and a backup server. Now, there's two main reasons why people like to have this sort of configuration. The most common is that it's very, very handy indeed to have a backup server in place and ready to go run the application at a moment's notice if the machine hosting the application normally happens to have a hardware failure. The other reason is that if an application gets to be very big, it might make sense to divide it up so that one portion of the application, maybe the alarm server, runs on this computer. Those two computers, they can look after the data login. And that machine back in the corner, that one can be the VTSCADA internet server and maybe also do the alarm notifications of modem calls and uh, email messages. Now, while it is possible to come up with some fairly complicated network topologies, once you start cutting services apart to, to run on various machines, the basic process of setting up a, a primary and a backup, well, that's about as easy as anything can be. For this demonstration, I've made my desk rather crowded here. First, I have a PLC. This is the same one that I used in the series on tag configuration. This is going to give me a piece of real hardware at a specific address that my servers will be able to talk to. This machine, that's going to be my primary server. VTSCADE is installed, and the application running on it is currently talking to the PLC. Now in a few moments, when I go to the on-screen portion of this video, the machine that I'm going to configure, that will become the backup server. So I'll go through the process. First, I'll show you how I configure the primary, and then we'll walk through installing the application on the backup server and doing that backup server configuration. The computer screen you're viewing is attached to the computer that will become the backup server. VTSCADA is installed and running, but the application isn't here yet. Now, before I turn this or any workstation into a server, it's a good idea to check your, uh, your license by clicking the About dialog to make sure that you are licensed for server capability. And yes, you will need to buy a VTSCADA license for every machine you're running the program on. Now, to configure a primary server, you don't need to install extra software. You don't need any extra hardware. You don't need to configure anything in VTSCADA itself. All you need to do is the following. I'll just demonstrate this with the tutorial. What I do is open the application configuration and then go to the Edit Server Lists tab. Your computer will be the first one in the list of available servers. If your network has a properly configured domain name server, all the servers on the network will be populated in the list. But even without that, you can set up an ad hoc network, maybe by editing your host's file, or you can always just type in the IP addresses. So here comes the entire process for configuring a primary server. I click the plus sign, and I'm done. That's it. Uh, other than clicking apply, there's absolutely nothing else to do. As soon as I click apply, this machine will be the primary server. Now, while that is a very, very simple process, it's important that you do this first before you transfer the application to the second workstation. The difference that it makes is one of having a single application that runs on two workstations or having two separate independent copies both trying to talk to the same hardware at the same time. Okay? So server configuration, it's a very simple step, but it's an important step. Now, close that because we don't want to configure the completed tutorial. Let's look at the other side of this, installing the application on this computer and configuring this to be the backup server. Now, I've got a screenshot from my primary server. And so over there on the other machine, you can see that I went through that process and added that machine name to my server list. That right there made that machine the primary server for the application. So now on this second computer, I'm going to run through the process of adding an application. I choose the advanced option and then say next. I'm going to do a get from workstation to transfer across the network and I'm going to copy it from that machine where it's running. 
Now VTSCADA will do a scan of that computer and find all of the applications. It sees that it's running. I say next, and we will start it as soon as it runs. Now VTSCADA is in the process of copying the application from one machine to the other. Now I'm expecting to see a, a notice pop up. It'll, it'll be a warning message telling me that only one machine, and not this one, is configured as the alarm server. That'll be fine. All of my alarms will be coming in and I will see them, but it does warn me that oh, since this workstation isn't on the uh, alarm notification list, maybe possibly I might not see an error message. We can close that and I can see my alarms just fine. And if I didn't have my speaker muted, you would be hearing it too. So that's just a warning message, nothing to worry about. All right, now then, this machine is now running as a client of the server. All of the I.O., and when I click the buttons, the I.O. is being routed through the primary and from the primary server to the PLC. All of the numbers that I see on the screen, and as I turn a dial, anything that changes, it's all coming first to the primary and then through the network to my client computer. Now, to make this computer a backup server, I can open up its application configuration dialog. I'm going to put my computer name into the server list and click the plus sign. I'm able to do this even over here on this client computer because I'm running with an account that has configuration privileges, or actually security is not enabled, so I have full privileges, and any computer can be used for a configuration just so long as that workstation isn't restricted by a runtime only license. My computer is now the second in the list. The way this works is that the first computer in the list, that becomes the primary, next one down, first backup, and so on. Click the apply, create a message, and we are done. I can now close my application configuration, and in the background, VTSCADA is in the process of copying all of the log files from the primary to the backup. Now, up until now, only the servers keep log files and any other recorded information. So even though this computer was running the application, it was not storing any of the log files. Now that it's a backup server, it will have a complete copy. Also, if the primary were to fail for any reason, this one will now be able to take over, continue logging, create my reports, anything I need to do. Let's see that happen. I'm going to open up a utility program that comes with VTSCADA called the Trace Viewer. We'll start watching uh, communication messages, and then in here, I'm going to open up the list of servers for all of the various components. You'll see that my computer, Andrew H., is running a few things, but all of the important stuff is running over there on the server. Now, if the server happened to go offline, which is exactly what I'm doing right now, and shutting the server or the application down on the primary server, instantly my computer takes over and is now running everything. Now, some configuration files are still saved over there, but that's got nothing to do with actually continuing this application and making sure that everything runs normally. If the application restarts, it will take a few moments while it goes through, this, goes through a process of synchronizing information. And as that happens, you'll see the primary server take over the running, the various services, one at a time. There's absolutely nothing more to the process of creating a primary and backup server.